Patrick Stewart has managed to maintain a wonderful career on the Shakespearean stage while dominating two major science fiction franchises, X-Men and Star Trek. And I have to say, I've rarely seen Brian happier than when he was allowed to touch Picard's communicator badge. It was wonderful because there were real meteorites at the recording. So so these things are four and a half billion years old, the, the primordial building blocks of the solar system. You get to touch the ingredients of Earth. And yet, me and the rest of the audience were more impressed with Patrick Stewart's communicator badge. Here is Patrick Stewart on Star Trek fiction versus cosmological reality. And of course, Star Trek The Next Generation and, and indeed the other shows, kind of there's this wonderful thing where a, a ship just goes, oh, look, here's another planet full of life. Here's another planet full of life. And of course, it actually turns out that the universe is of incredible size and to get anywhere, it's certainly with the technology that we're currently talking about, that actually the likelihood of being, you know, we'll get to another planet and go, no, that, that's just a kind of gas giant. That's got nothing in it. That's yeah, got but, nothing we, but in of it. course, we didn't film those episodes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> there, there were lots and lots and lots of weeks that we didn't find any aliens at all. <laughs> oh, well, well it's uh, warp nine. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, there you go. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if this is the place and time to, for a revelation. But you mentioned a date just now, Brian, 1987. Now, there is a connection between the arrival of Star Trek The Next Generation and the um, underfunding of the space race, and particularly of NASA. Very few people know this, but Star Trek The Next Generation was actually financed by the American government and the CIA. Why? To distract the United States' attention away from the fact that we were no longer spending any money on space. Now, that <laughs> is a conspiracy theory, isn't it? If you say so, Brian. <laughs> I, 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 can I, just, I know this is kind of show and tell with, with what Monica has brought along. I brought a little something too, which yeah. is also from outer space. I'd just like you to pass it around you. This was from the last year of the series. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it? Actually, there is something sad about the fact that we, we have I, I tried to run it. I, I had a piece of Mars in my hand. <laughs> 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 no, I agree. I, I, well, I should say what it is. It's, it's, it, it is a Star Trek. It's a communicator. It is. So I can tap uh, it and say... An make original. It. Not a, not a, that's that's original. I wore all the way through the last season. So yeah. it's been around a bit. Ah. Oh. I have never, that's the biggest reaction. We have talked about some of the, in, in, in seven series, some of the most incredible, mind-blowing ideas of evolution, of particle physics. We have had people talking about CERN, about the Large Hadron Collider and the incredible real things, something made by a prop manufacturer in a suburb of LA. Can you believe such a thing exists? Get the Turing Shroud out of the way, put that in a bin. Well, that's a bad example. The well, no, Turing that's what I'm saying. Saying. <laughs> what I'm comparing this to is the Turing Shroud. Oh, exactly. this is, let, let us now pass this relic, this nail of the cross <laughs> that has been brought here. <laughs> oh, I have stigmata too. <laughs> the, uh... the Infinite Monkey Cage episode, we took all of the...